another yeah. question at you. Awesome. This is from a Julia P. RMT. She's obviously an RMT. Julia, thanks for your question. Um, how much and when should I be saving for retirement? It's a great, the great, word. yeah. Retirement. Retirement. Yeah, and, and I'm so scared, but why? so excited. So scared. Okay, tell me, <laughs> no, this is really, really good. Tell me why you're scared. Well, you're scared because you're constantly worrying that you won't have enough. Mm. Like to our parents, care. the yeah. baby boomers, they're like, save for retirement. Oh, yeah. Start early. My yeah. parents made me and this I'm, year. They made yeah. me. Yeah, and I'm yeah. pumped for retirement. Oh, but yeah. then it's, you're also scared because you're yeah. like, am I going to have enough? Yeah. There's no income. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, like, yeah, well, you're, there is, but there isn't. Right. Right. It's, yeah. it's exactly. income independence, right? Exactly. Like yeah. you are yeah. um, fully self-sufficient. Yes. Yes. Will uh, I be able to do what I want to do in retirement? Yeah. yeah. And um, so in that, mm -hmm. the most powerful tool is planning, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And, and projections. So yeah. one of the ways that I look at retirement planning mm -hmm. is like uh, looking at, looking through the lens of a manual camera. Mm -hmm. um, so you know when it's, it's so fuzzy yeah. and you haven't um, really gotten the, the, the zoom picture. properly, yeah. right? Yep. Not, like the younger we are, that's what we're looking at. So we're, we're starting and then as we're getting closer to retirement, it starts to get clearer and clearer and clearer. But the key yeah. is continuing to um, to look and reevaluate and recalculate, and then having the right power team around you to make sure that yeah. you know yeah. that that you're on track. But back to the the question, yeah, um, when to start? Yes, great question because so often we think, hey, there's uh, time for that. There's time for that. Yeah. Retirement's out. But one of the things we talked about earlier mm -hmm. was um, the power of saving earlier, right? Right. right. So um, the time is ultimately now. Now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because you know, one of the things I, I talk about is the power of compounding interest. Mm -hmm. So that means yes. in, like interest yeah. on interest, right? God, I now and know how to calculate compounding interest. You just learned so how to do that exciting. in my first real estate course. I was like, what the hell is this? When am I ever going to use this? Bye. Yeah. It's the yeah. Thing yeah. Of it I is know. so, isn't I'm it? I'm about that compound interest now. My gosh, like my like. <laughs> Woman crush on you is just like increasing. <laughs> like you just call. It's all about hormones and pheromones. Sexy. <laughs> this is such a great They're having a mom. <laughs> They're having a mom yeah. moment. Yeah. Really mom moment. Mom moment. Yeah. 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 I love it. Um, but Albert Einstein called um, uh, compounding interest the power of the eighth wonder of the world because oh, it's yeah. God so them, what yeah. God yeah. bless yeah. that man. Yeah. Because, but because of what it does, yeah. right? Yeah. And so. Um, you know, when, when I, I think about because of what it does, right? And so you know when. I, I had the um, uh, good fortune of being able to talk to some younger kids mm -hmm. about saving money. Yeah. And I showed them an example of, um, you know, a person in their 20s mm -hmm. saving a, a small amount right. per month. Yeah. And, and then a person, uh, at, like, up until age 65. Okay. And, um, and then a person in their 40s who started right. um, with a much greater figure, right. um, shorter period of time, but much greater figure. Okay. And I asked him, I was like, you know, who do you think uh, is, ready? Is, is, better is, is better off at age 65? Yeah. And of course, the, the way I had the numbers was, you know, you would think yeah. mm -hmm. that it was the person in, in their 40s. In their 40s. Yeah. Um, but of oh, course, contraire. right? Yeah. Oh, contraire. Yeah. yeah. And so the person in their 20s that was saving yes. 25 bucks a month yes. yeah. was yeah. so so much better off, wow. even yeah. at just earning um, year over year an average of 7% right. return. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it just shows how powerful yeah. compounding is. So that's why the moral of the story is um, today is better than tomorrow. Yes. I think, too, I like the $25, like mm -hmm. when I opened up an RRSP and I was a wee little kinky yeah. in undergrad, yeah. I was only contributing 25 bucks a month. But it was still 25 bucks a month because yeah. yeah. obviously the majority of my money was going to school and yeah. living expenses. Yeah. Retirement is so far from my mind because yeah. I'm not even educated enough to get a job yeah. to think about retiring. Like, yeah. what the heck? Yeah. So, but I did. My parents were like, even if it's just $10, yeah. it's yeah. more than $0. So Absolutely. why are you doing it? So yeah. I think we need to really share too. It's, it's just a small amount. It's something, yeah. right? Yeah. It's better yeah. than nothing. Absolutely. It yeah. gets our mindset in the right place. Yeah. And the other thing is, learning ourselves to have short, medium, 
and long-term yeah. savings. Yes. Because yeah. it, there are always going to be those, oh man, sort of moments like, yep. where did this mm-hmm. expense come from? Yep. And, or, right? The like, car. Oh my furnace, gosh, it's so real. Yes. Like the furnace. Furnace. Yes. Oh, I'm so afraid no. of my furnace. <laughs> It's like short term savings. Yes. Like such a, I do yeah. have some money. There just, you go. But that's the fear. Like, oh, but money. right? Yeah. yeah. And then it's, but but that's yeah. that's what it's it's there for. And then and a lot of times we think, okay, I'm going to start to save, so I'm going to start to put something in in an RSP. But then we forget that it's inflexible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. So then we utilize that and and then we get turned off about the whole idea of savings mm, because yeah. we use the long term. Savings yeah, vehicle. Yeah. The other thing with RSPs is you have to stop. So I, I talked about this recently yeah. in a segment, and I was like, hey, you know, you have to actually do a calculation to yeah. say, it, like, is the cost benefit actually there? Because yeah. the higher incomes benefit more from RSPs. Yes. And so you have to stop to say, am I actually getting yep. the benefit right. that I that I think I'm getting yeah. um, in both currently and in retirement, right? right? Like, is it doing yeah. for me what I think it's doing? Because yeah. perhaps another investment vehicle is is more efficient for, yeah. for that goal. Yeah. And it sounds, it could sound complicated to people, like, hearing it's RSP and, yeah. like, what sure. does it mean when it goes in and what does it mean when you take it out and everything like that. But literally, it can just be your savings account. Oh, like, it yeah. does, yeah. like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like if I think it's you're a starting thing. out, yeah. it can be... Five dollars, absolutely, every into other a week. TFSA or something. Yeah. And absolutely. like, yeah, and somebody can you you can physically do it online banking, yep. or like you can absolutely. get somebody There's to do it of... automatically, where you don't even miss that five or ten or twenty dollars. Yeah. yeah, and it just goes into your savings or it goes into a TFSA. Yeah. yeah. Yep. If you and don't need it to be complicated right now, it doesn't have to don't. be complicated. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Just yeah. get your mind in the in the right sort yeah. of mindset yeah. right that, like at the end of the, if you start small like five dollars every other week you mm-hmm. know lots of people get paid every awesome. other week it's like okay every other friday five dollars ten dollars goes into yep. an account yeah. yeah automatically my my bank or planner yep. or whatever so at the end of the year you're going to see that chunk of cash mm-hmm. and you're going to be like hey I want to learn more. Yeah. And then maybe they're going to meet so with you good. about an RSP mm-hmm, sure. or GICs, and they're going to be like, okay, I did this. Mm-hmm. It feels really good. Yeah. yeah. How can I do it better next year? Yeah. yeah. So start small. Absolutely. I love Absolutely. That. And the key is start. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. start. Awesome. I'm going to throw in one more question. Yeah. Um, because I know you're so passionate about education and finances and combining the two. Yeah. I would love to talk about the lack of finances being taught in mm. schools at the Fire moment. It. Yeah. I'm going to stay calm during yeah. this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but how do you feel about it? And, you know, you know, what would you do to better it, to change mm-hmm. it so that kids are coming out of school and maybe going right to the workforce or to post-secondary and they feel more educated and prepared? Because mm-hmm. yeah. they, you know what, they have no idea and neither did I. Yeah. I only knew what my parents told me, but yeah. my parents are a different generation. So what they knew and what they did was never going to work for me because... Yeah. Mm-hmm. They didn't go to post-secondary. I yeah. did. I had yeah. all of this debt in my early 20s. So yeah. how can we better prepare the next generation, you know, through the education system? Yeah, you bring up a really great point. So first of all, no, we don't have anything in the schools. It sucks. Um, you know, relatively yeah. recently, there was a small um, piece of budget mm-hmm. put in for that, but it's only select schools. And I, I'm, I'm not incredibly... I'm an optimistic person. Yeah. Um, but that's something I'm not very optimistic about because I, They're I not you know, budgets you a are reason real to be optimistic. Yeah. yeah. And so, but I, I do feel strongly part of why I do all of this is because it's yeah. something that I feel strongly about. And, and I, I believe that, um, while we, you know, might not be able to change those rules or change the education system overnight, mm-hmm. we are all individually given our own gifts and yeah. what we can contribute yeah. and we can all make our own individual choices of how we give that. Right. Yes. Like how yeah. we better yeah. utilize yeah. that right. Right. Um, to everyone's benefit. Mm-hmm. And so I think that, you know, the more we're out there um, in, in talking to kids mm-hmm. and, and volunteering our times when, when those opportunities arise, right. then that's um, so at this point, yeah. I think a, a great way yeah. of, of making a difference. When it comes to the education system, um, so often it's looked at, the viewpoint 
um, comes through mm -hmm. that, oh, well, that's something that should be taught at home. Well, that's but the you thing, brought... yeah, they leave, a lot of stuff is assumed to be left to parents, but yes. then you're assuming a specific yeah. home structure, and which even, is not cool. Well, and even if there's a great home it. structure, yeah. right? But yeah. even if there's a great home structure. That doesn't yeah. mean They're parents still... are equipped to, exactly. to share that financial yeah. literacy. Or you know? just have and the time. Have the time. Have or the most parents are both working. You know, Or the yeah. viewpoint. Yeah. yeah. Because you brought up something really key. You said it's a different generation, different mindset. Yeah. And that was one of the things I struggled with. With yeah. in you know how I speak to my son about money. Right. He right. knows now, even from a young age. Um, I mean, he's he how old is, is young. your son now? He's three and a half. <laughs> oh my god! Um, and yeah. you're really teaching him stuff. Yeah. Well, he knows. So you know, like so. Um, sure is we, we run <laughs> parties. <laughs> cost money. Yeah, but he knows actually. He knows that we like when we this. ran out of milk and I I needed to go out and get milk. Yeah. Um, he knows that. Mommy goes to work. Yes. Yeah. And um, but there are bills that need to be paid, and yeah. then and after those are paid, then mommy can put money aside. And he he understands. Like yeah. I think a lot of times we um, just immediately assume our kids aren't going to understand. Yeah. And we don't I give enough credit. And yeah. and I I'm constantly challenging myself in that thought process. Yeah. And and the previous generation telling me all the time, oh well, he's just through. But no, actually he. He understands and Again, and, why not and start? Yeah. yeah, why not start? Why not have that conversation? And yeah. so, um, and explaining to him why we're not going to buy this and we're, yep. and yeah. we're not going to buy that. Um, but the whole idea of um, you know, in in a in a lot of cases, it's not fair to assume that in every household they're going to you know meet eye to eye on yeah. every topic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we teach about. Um, really other important life skills yeah. within school. And this one is just as important because, you know, what happens? We graduate and then we go to post-secondary and yeah. we're offered credit cards, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Oh, and like, here's a free boy. thing. Dangerous. And like, and as a student, Dangerous. right? Yeah. It's like something free. I'm getting like this towel oh, or this mug or whatever. Tap, tap, yes. Tap. Hey, OSAP yeah. is the same. Yeah. A lot of kids look at OSAP as like the free money. I don't have to pay yeah. back right now. Yeah. Like my, some of my yeah. friends would bring their OSAP money to the bar and I'm like, yeah. you guys, oh, like you got to pay no. that back at some point. But yeah. you, yeah. the thought process is not quite that far. No, right? And we talked about, that's such a good point. And that's something we touched on earlier because we said, the idea that the mindset around borrowed money that mm -hmm. that it's our own but it, it isn't it it's it? someone else's yeah. Yeah. you're using it and you're using it at, at, a charge. at an interest yeah, yeah. yeah. right yeah. and how much does something actually cost you mm -hmm. right yeah. Yeah. so in saying okay my university degree um, cost me thirty thousand yeah. dollars but what did it actually by the time you yeah. finished all those OSAP payments yeah. or loan payments whatever you know structure yeah. you used yeah. what was the actual cost of right. that exactly. and, and, and what's high. your yeah. right yeah. Yeah. yeah my parents were paying off OSAP loans until like 10 15 years ago wow. for sure yeah. for sure yeah. OSAP yeah. can really catch up oh with yeah. You. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yes. so okay. So in the school system, I would love to see it taught there. Yeah. But um, I think we're still going to have to pick up the slack, though. Like you said, absolutely. volunteering, doing yeah. workshops just as much as we possibly can to yeah. help them yeah. out. So what I would love to see yeah. is that schools reached out more yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. to those volunteers. Find the people yes. in your community who are willing to come out, yeah. who are willing to um, yeah. you know, bring, bring those programs into the mm -hmm. school. There's That's so what I would like I to hope see. after yeah. this airs that they all call you because oh, yeah, a lot of, so too. like schools and departments don't have a lot of budgets for stuff, but mm -hmm. there are people like you who are so well versed that are like, I willingly will come for free and volunteer. They yeah. get hung up on yeah. having a paid guest or speaker. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many of us that are willing because we want to be looked after by the next generation. So we exactly. should be getting them ready. And yeah. I think, I hope every school <laughs> city oh, calls you after yeah. this. Hey, they need you. I only you. have so much time. <laughs> <laughs> but what I but I, what I would love is yeah. that I'm not the only one. There's so you many more, would, yeah. Right? So, yeah. yeah. There's uh, the Business Education Partnership. Yes, mm. which, you do that. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. And they have schools that are a part of it. It's totally amazing. free. Yeah. Amazing. And they can submit applications for people with whatever designation. It yeah. could be business. It could be finance. It could be health. It could be fashion. Anything related to any subject in school. Yeah, and you can come fabulous. and you lecture and you share your wisdom. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. It's I really love that. wonderful. I yeah. love that. I would love to see something too when it comes to financial education in the school systems that the parents show up. Mm -hmm. eh? Like, they like are the parents, a very big part because of they it, yeah. and they hear and then because I think one of the key things when it comes to education 
on topics like practical topics like this yeah. is being on the same page. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, you know, my whole thing is starting and continuing the conversation yeah. around yes. finance. Because, yeah. you know, it's so often something that we're uncomfortable with, ashamed of maybe, yeah. or, or, right? Like There's all so these negative shame. emotions Guilt. and feelings come yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that needs to, to be the case. I think that yeah. it's something that we Agreed. should be able to openly uh, talk about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, just like the fitness, we've talked the talk, now the Fresh Five will walk the walk. Uh, Martha has created an amazing goal setting activity for us to complete. We'll work on that through the month of March and share our results with our viewers. Uh, Martha, if you want to introduce the activity, uh, we'll also post it on Facebook so that you guys can try it out as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, this activity is really based around our mindset around money. Our mindset around so many things in life is really powerful. And that can be powerful to the negative or powerful to the positive. And the whole idea here is that we turn that into a positive, mm -hmm. that we take control of our understanding and our mindset. So the thought process here is that so often when we think about money, we think about the journey starting with numbers and analysis. So our budget and our cash flow. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of time passes by and we get so frustrated because we're not getting to the point that we should be. So in this activity, what we're going to do, what the Fresh Five are going yeah. to do, yep. is to take a step back and kind of take a bird's eye view of uh, their thought process around money and turning that negative, yeah. potentially, like those negative affirmations that we give ourselves mm -hmm. into positive affirmations. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, in retraining our thought process, we shift that mindset to the positive and yeah. that is beautifully powerful yeah so yeah i'm excited That's for great. you guys me too all right so we will share that on our stories yes yeah. absolutely so freshies we hope you take all these amazing tips and tricks in both fitness and finance and exercise them in your daily life i want to thank mike and martha for being here uh, and we'll catch up with you guys in april bye, bye. bye. Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Policy. I'm excited to be here. I'm a registered physiotherapist at Embody Health Center and my practice focuses on orthopedics as well as pelvic health. Okay. Okay.